Hello and welcome boys, girls and otherwise. It's King Dumps and it's time for another Pick'em video. I assume at this point now you've probably watched like 10 of these, so you know the drill. I'm going to take you through my Pick'ems. I'm going to explain them. I've read the script for the I Am Rio Major. This is it, boys and girls. If you want that diamond coin, you, you know who to listen to. Right, we're just going to... I don't know what that means, but we're going to go through it top to bottom. Outsiders versus Fnatic. Now, this matchup, I think you, you just simply have to take Outsiders for it. Outsiders have already beaten Fnatic during this event, obviously, to get out of the Challenger stage. They, too, owed them. Outsiders, in general, have been, like, a really solid team in recent months. They've kind of ramped up ever since that Rotterdam event or around that Rotterdam event. I feel like Outsiders have just ramped up and up and up and improved and just gotten better. There was a period, obviously, after losing Yekindar, where there was a bit of an adjustment period. Yeah, period, period, period. I'm just going to keep saying that word, apparently. And I think Jame was struggling in that kind of adjustment period to have, like, individual impact. Kickert was kind of transitioning into fulfilling that Yekindar role and wasn't... Obviously needed a little bit of time to kind of get up to speed, and he's never going to beat Yekindar in that role, right? He's never going to be better than Yekindar. Uh, and Fame needed a little bit of time to adjust. Now that all of that has kind of slotted into place, Kicker is a bit more comfortable doing the aggro stuff. James has kind of gotten his individual form and level back a little bit. And Fame has progressed and looks really legit, by the way, right? I really rate this Fame guy, and I think he could go on to be like another fantastic find. Uh, and Flit is Flit. The only guy who I think is still struggling to find his place and find out how to be the best version he can be in Outsiders is Norbert. Apart from that, I'm really down for this Outsiders team, man. Jame time, bang. We're not going to execute until 15 seconds. Sweet. We're going to bore the other team into fucking disconnecting from the server and just letting us take the free win on our T sides. Look, you can make criticisms of Outsiders, but the way they grind out games is super consistent and is really, really difficult, I think, to deal with for a lot of teams, I think. They're just going to put pressure on basically whoever they play. And I think they're the perfect kind of playoffs team in that regard is they could go far. They could also get knocked out early. But whatever happens, they're going to give teams a game. So I'm taking Outsiders for this one. The reason I'm not going for Fnatic is, like I say, they've already been beaten once by Outsiders in this event. So you, you all pretty much automatically have to pick Outsiders. But the other thing about Fnatic is they're still super variable and all over the place, particularly individually. Fascia goes from like being like a hard carry and looking like he did on Ecstatic to like 0.8 bot level performances, obviously still adjusting to his roles and stuff. And he doesn't have all of the most glamorous roles. But Nikados is pretty much the same. He goes from being like an absolute world beater of an author to fucking junior, like within the space of a series, let alone within a game itself. Um... Fnatic are just too all over the place to be able to kind of confidently predict them to beat, I think, anyone in this playoff bracket, to be honest. Um, maybe I'd, I, I'd against Maus is probably where I, I'd have them having the best chance. And also, Fnatic have not had to beat anyone basically inside the top 15 in series play to get here. I j it just means I can't take them over a clear top 10 team in a best of three. Fnatic just don't have the proof in the pudding, basically. Don't get me wrong, I love Fnatic. I'm really big on this Fnatic lineup, and I think given a little bit more time to stabilize, get everyone used to the roles, they could be fucking fantastic. And top eight of this major is already a banger achievement. And they've got Mezzi, UK represent. I just can't take them in this series. Simple as that. Next up, Mal Klaus not Maud Klaus. <laughs> Next up. Mao's Cloud9. So this series, you have to take Cloud9. If you put Mao's, cool, but you're a crazy person, a maniac, and probably a moron. Cloud9 have just steadily ramped up as this event has gone on. They've gotten better and better and better. They're at a point now where it feels almost imperious, like the momentum that they've built up feels difficult to stop at this point. And I think the fundamental thing that has me having faith in Cloud9 above Miles in 9 out of 10 scenarios, is Shiro and Axile are both ramping up and playing incredibly well. Shiro has been posting some bonkers numbers throughout this tournament thus far. 
And I just don't think Mal's have anyone who can hang with Shiro and Axile when Shiro and Axile are playing near their peak. Frozen is probably the closest they can get. Frozen is an incredible rifler and the best player on Mal's and is not a million miles away from Axile on his best day. Torzi can't quite measure up to Shiro yet. Still a great AWPer, but can't quite measure up. And then Exertion is the other guy you'd maybe look to and say, can he maybe match up with Axile? Again, on Axile's best day, I don't think so. Cloud9, in my honest opinion, have two of the best five players in the world, Shiro and Axile. I think definitely are going to be in that top five conversation. They are right now for sure and probably will become the end of the year. And for these reasons, like I say, the momentum Cloud9 have built up. Um, they're the, the better team overall. They have two absolute elite superstar players that Mouse just can't match up against. I just can't see this going any other way except Cloud9. If Outsiders Fnatic is like a 60-40, 65-35 matchup in Outsiders' favor, I think this one's got to be like 80-20 in Cloud9's favor. I would be shocked if Mouse could win this series. Not outside of the realms of possibility for sure. But I, I would be shocked. And I think this top eight, again, it's already a massive achievement for Mouse. I didn't have them making this far. I thought they were a borderline team. They could kind of get to top eight, but I didn't think they would. So fair play to them. They've already proven me wrong. What the fuck do I know? Uh, and shout out to Dexter. Yeah, the boys. Gotta love it when the Australians are doing well. But yeah, it's going to be a stretch too far to beat Cloud9. So I can't take them. Uh, I've got Spirit winning Spirit Heroic, but this one is is a toss-up matchup for me. This one's a 50-50. I think you could go either way. The reason I've taken Spirit is simply because they have that big bad boy major buff. Chopper plays his best Counter-Strike at the major. They play a level above what they do outside of the majors at them. And with that increased gear that that extra level that they can find i think it should be enough to get them over the line against heroic particularly because um heroic have been relying on kadian a lot kadian has been playing out of his fucking skin recently and i need to give kadian a shout out because there's two things i've always said about kadian and i think he's slowly starting to maybe prove me wrong on both of these points one that I don't think Kadian can match the level of the other top Orpers. Look, don't get me wrong. I don't think Kadian's a simple or a Shiro. But I'm starting to think where I would have taken Torzi 100%. I would have probably taken Nikados over, over Kadian. I'm getting to the point now where it's like, okay, maybe Kadian actually is in that tier. Kind of below the, the elite elites of Shiro and Simple and Zywu, uh, Zywu. I would say Kadian is starting to prove me wrong and maybe actually he can hang with some of these other top Orpers at a consistent level. And then the other thing I've always said about Kadian is that when Kadian is top bragging, heroic usually aren't winning. It's usually in a heroic difficult period is where Kadian kind of takes up the slack and kind of gets the fragging done to keep them competitive at that moment. But it probably isn't a recipe for long-term success, ha success, having Kadian as one of their best players, if not their outright best player at the moment. He might be proving me wrong on that front. Making top eight at a major with it, that's shit you can't argue with. That's baller. And yeah, Kadian's proven me wrong, I think, on, on potentially both of those points. Let's see how it goes in this top eight, but also for the rest of the year. Like I say, coin flip matchup. I'm taking spirit, but this one could go either way. This one really could go either way, I think. Furia versus Na'Vi. I think this one's another toss-up. If this wasn't an event in a Brazil with the Brazilian crowd, I would take Na'Vi 10 out of 10 times. I think Na'Vi would almost never lose this matchup. With the Brazilian crowd buff, Furia have been a completely different team. Furia have been like peak Furia, which we see very, very rarely, I think, these days. And they've been peak Furia pretty much throughout because of that insane crowd buff. Whether it will hold true in the same way when the pressure is up a lot higher, they're playing against the best team still left in the competition. They're playing against the team that are probably going to be the favorites or second favorites alongside Cloud9 in many people's eyes. I don't know if the crowd buff will continue being a crowd buff or it will start to put pressure on them and start to, to potentially affect their play in a negative way. I could see it happening that way. I just don't know. 
I'm not quite going to say this is a toss-up matchup. I still think this should be kind of 60-40, maybe 55-45 in Na'Vi's favor. That sounds like I'm I'm making it really close. I do think Na'Vi are a much better team, but just with this crowd buff, man, with Kesara and Yuri banging, fragging out of their freaking minds, and with the crowd buff helping elevate the rest of the players, this Fury are really scary, man, and could easily win this. Um, Simple hasn't been like at his peak, peak level as well. If Simple does kind of ramp up to his peak, peak best and Bit can pick up a little bit more, we're not quite seeing like 2021 Bit, um, but if he can pick up a little bit more as well, then yeah, I, I think Na'Vi will win this one. But just under the circumstances, I think it could be really close. Now, just addressing the rest of the bracket here, we'll kind of go through it quickly because I think these semi-final matchups, I think, are pretty straightforward. I think Cloud9 should definitely beat Outsiders. I think Na'Vi should definitely beat Team Spirit. It's not like they're not interesting matchups should they occur. Um, Outsiders, very slow, methodical style. It's going to be interesting to see how Cloud9 deal with that. Considering Cloud9 are a team that kind of are supposedly built on very, very strong fundamentals themselves, I think Outsiders are the same. I think they... They use this very slow, methodical style that's built on a very, very fundamental approach to CS, you know, like taking map control methodically and, and clearing things out methodically on their T side, stuff like this. So I'm interested to see how this matchup should play out. But I do think, again, I don't think outsiders have anyone who can hang with Shiro and Axile. I think that on its own is going to give a Cloud9 enough of an X factor. And Na'Vi Spirit, again, I think just, you know, when you've got Simple, you've got Electronic, you've got players like Bit, um, Spirit are going to struggle to hang with that. I think Wonderful is progressing as an AWPA really, really nicely, but he can't hold a candle to Simple just yet. And I think he also has a, let's say, less impactful style than the way Simple plays. Um, so I do think these these quarterfinal matchups, semifinal matchups, sorry, should be relatively straightforward and we should end up with a cloud nine navi final this cloud nine navi final if it happens i think it is a massive toss-up i really really do it's a throwback to the 2021 rivalry where these guys were the two best teams in the world obviously navi took over towards the back end of 2021 and ended up being comfortably the team of the year once we got out of the online era this Cloud9 team have shown what they can do when they peak at the right time and hit the land in the right form like they did in Dallas. Um, and they are getting more, I think, consistent and better on that land stage. It's taken a little bit of time, but they were so woefully inexperienced, you've got to remember, and they were being thrown in at the deep end. Like IEM Cologne 2021 was like the first big land for most of these players, obviously outside Hobbit, who's immensely experienced. I do give Na'Vi the edge because of Simple and because of the fact Na'Vi have played so many grand finals this year, bro. You cannot underestimate how important that experience is going to be when the crowd is there in that packed arena, when all the lights are shining in your fucking face and everyone is looking at you like this is your chance to win a major Cloud9. You're not going to get many better chances than this playoff bracket where you're one of the favorite teams and a lot of the really good teams and teams that you've lost to in recent times have been eliminated. Like this is this is Cloud9's moment, man, for a very, very young team and for Hobbit to win his second major. By the way, if Hobbit does that, what a fucking legend. And Hobbit should 100% go down in like one of... If you had to make a top 20 list of like best players in Counter-Strike ever or like, I don't know like the body of work like hobbit has got to go in there if he wins a second major with a different team and under different circumstances where he's not like the outright star player like he was on gambit like him and adren were the star players like on this cloud nine team he's like that third guy who's there to make up the ground when shira and axile are a bit quiet or if he just happens to have a pop-off game he can he can be that carry force fucking huge credits to hobbit man like massive shout out on the other side of the table Obviously, you've got Simple winning his um, second major. Deserved. I think he's the best player to have touched the game. And then, obviously, Bit, uh, Electronic, and Perfecto. SDY winning a major would, would be an amazing story, particularly considering... Um, I don't know if you follow him on, on social media, on Twitter, but obviously, he talks a lot about the conflict in the Ukraine and how it's affecting his family. Um, so it would be an incredible, heartwarming story from that perspective for SDY to win a major. And, you know, I'm sure SDY will be pinching himself because I can't imagine a year ago he could 
ever foresee a world in which he would be in a position to win a major. And again, if you're looking at this playoff bracket, if you're Na'Vi, you, you've got to be thinking, I mean, Furia will be a stiff test, but once we get past that, you know, they've got to be feeling really good about themselves to take home the major trophy. So this is what I'm expecting. This is what I reckon we're going to see. Let me know if you agree in the comments. Let me know if you don't. If you didn't like this video, you're just going to be a bronze coiner, aren't you? You pleb. Like, get with it. I'm not going to show you my pickups from the other stage because the other stage... Oh, do you know what? We'll have a quick look at them. We'll have a quick look at them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, in fact, this is like bonus. If you stuck around for this long in the video, I know I've just done my outro, but I'll quickly go through the other stages, right? This was dumb. I shouldn't have put this. This was stupid. And then probably shouldn't have taken both Gamer Legion and OO Nation. I was really believing in the Brazil buff. Uh, fool, I know. I, I know, I'm dumb. Uh, I shouldn't have put both of these teams. If I was going to take a gamble on one, the other one should have been replaced by Maus. Um, that's not just with hindsight, although it is with hindsight, but I'm also trying to look at it like what were reasonable picks considering the information I had at the time. Reasonable, reasonable. I would say reasonable and probably Game of Legion should have been swapped with Maus and this one was unreasonable. So I, I probably could have got my five that I needed here, uh, but I was a bit dumb. And then the legend stage, I think all of this was reasonable, to be honest. Um, maybe this was a little bit optimistic, but I don't know. I just had like a feeling. I just had a feeling. I probably should have gone with Fury on this one. The dumbest thing was that I didn't put Fury anywhere. That was a big oversight. I, I don't know why. I think I did these in about 10 seconds because I had like a minute or two before the pickums closed. And I just like slapped them in and didn't think about them again. Um, this one, I got baited by Nip's form with alexi b fresh in like at the rmr and stuff so i think that's reasonable reasonable i don't think it was unreasonable ends nearly got there this was totally the the easiest apart from bne it was this or bne were going to be the top picks for the o3 and neither of them went o3 so like i i very few people are going to have got their o3 pick them uh so i probably should have got five again here to be honest this was dumb no this wasn't dumb this was reasonable this one was a bit dumb and then I I should have had Furia in there, which would have been my fifth. Um, I because I don't think I would have put Furia to go three zero. I probably would have put them here ahead of maybe Nip or Ents. Uh, yeah. So I definitely could have got a decent coin instead. I'm gonna get some silver shit unless I absolutely fuck up in in a good way, not fuck up in a bad way. If I like you know get in there and fucking wreck the champion stage maybe i can get a diamond not diamond gold coin anyway that's the video i already did the outro subscribe Mwah. love you long time